What's up everybody, this is Nick from Laidlaw's Harley-Davidson and today we're going to be doing a review of the Street Bob. This is the 2020 Street Bob, it's a soft tail. Um, but before we get into the specifics of it and a, a riding review of the bike, because this bike is the entry point into uh, the soft tail frame and for a lot of riders it's actually the entry point into Harley-Davidson, I like to take the time and, and talk about the new soft tail frame, the new soft tail lineup and what it kind of represents and who it's for. So the soft tail is the middleweight cruiser in Harley's lineup. It's going to be heavier than a Sportster, although we're going to see it's not by that much really. Um, but it's going to be lighter than the touring bikes and it, it's representative of kind of a jack of all trades I'd say. It's not going to be as good in distance riding as the touring bikes, but it's also not going to be as cumbersome as they are in the city. Um, while also providing better highway performance than the Sportsters, it's going to be a better bike to commute on because of that for, for those of you who do have highway uh, you know, trips to make. So there's not really too much that the Softail can't do, um, but there's also not really anything that it's the absolute best at within Harley's lineup, with the exception of maybe performance-focused riding. So the new frame was uh, launched in 2018, and the Street Bob actually remains uh, almost entirely unchanged. Uh, with the exception of, of new colors being available. But the, the new frame, when it came out in 2018, it was lighter and stiffer than the frames it replaced. It replaced both the Dyna and the Softail frame, um, the, the new Softail frame, that is. And uh, I think one of the key things to remember about it is that it, it, while it is heavier than the Sportster, it has a very low center of gravity, and it does a great job of hiding its weight. Uh, the new frame has more suspension travel in the rear and in the front. I'd say the suspension is a little bit stiffer. It's not what I would call uh, uncompliant, meaning that out on the highway it's hugely comfortable. But while the previous generation Dyna frame and soft tail bikes uh, had a lot of brake dive under heavy braking, the new dual bending valve fork from Showa does a much better job of keeping the bike controlled under heavy braking and uh, over stiff bumps. You're not going to be bottoming out the front suspension. Um, the motor in this bike is Harley's big twin. Um, that's the new Milwaukee 8. It's got four valves per cylinder. It's got more top end power than the twin cam. It runs substantially cooler than the twin cam. It's hard mounted in this particular application to the bike, which means that it adds rigidity to the frame. And while it does have a pretty substantial displacement of about 1750 cc's in the 107 cubic inch motor, it doesn't make crazy top end power like a lot of sport bikes do. It makes really, really friendly, effortless torque. So it's not something that a new rider needs to be uh, afraid of. You certainly want to respect it. It is a powerful motor, um, but it's not going to surprise you. It's very predictable. It's very linear. It's very effortless. And it's one of my favorite things about this bike. Um, for, for street use is that that motor, it always has power there when you want it. It's never um, insane unless you do something like a stage three. Um, it's just uh, exhilarating and fun and effortless. All of the new soft tails have six speed transmissions. That's going to help with highway comfort. You're going to get less buzz because you're going to be operating at a lower RPM and you're going to get better fuel economy. And every soft tail is also belt drive. And this is something that I really enjoy. Um, it means you're not replacing sprockets as often. You don't have to replace belts as often as you do chains. And while you do have to make sure they're at the correct tension, you're not cleaning them as often as you do with uh, chains. So there's a lot of advantages to that. So that's something, that's stuff that's all generally true of the new soft tails. Um, the Street Bob though is uh, the model that we're looking at today. It's the most affordable of the new soft tail range. And um, it's uh, got bobber styling. And what that means is it's a very minimalist bike. Everything that you need is there, but there's nothing you don't need there. It's just the essentials. And that means it's a really good starting point for customization. As we can see at the bike that we're looking here, this is a customized Street Bob. This is a 2019 with a Stage 3 kit. It's kind of that clubbed out style that we see being really popular here in Southern California and along the West Coast in general. Um, but uh, the Street Bob itself is not only the most affordable, but it's a great entry point for people into bigger bikes because it's the lightest of the new soft tails. It's got mid controls, which give you a lot of great leverage uh, when you're riding, as do the wide handlebars. Uh, and it's got relatively narrow tires, front and rear, that are quite balanced with one another. Um, that makes it a really easy handling bike. Uh, it's got, as for design uh, philosophy, you know, as a bobber, it's got those uh, spoked wheels that give you that really classic aesthetic, although the uh, doesn't require the, the running of, of tubed tires, which is nice. It makes it a little, little easier to, to find tires and 
uh, fit the tires and everything. It's got a three and a half gallon tank, which gives it over 150 mile range, depending on your riding style, but I'd say pretty safely get 150 miles. And uh, being a bobber and, and being this sort of, uh, at this price point, I think really lends itself to uh, being a blank canvas and being customized. Now, as we're gonna see, uh, I've got another uh, modified street bob here in a similar style, but just done um, to uh, a different owner's taste. But it really is this blank canvas that can be modified in a variety of ways, uh, including, you know, uh, not only aesthetics, but uh, quality of life things. Like I was just there focusing on the cruise control um, that was added to this bike because all of the soft tails are throttle by wire. You can add cruise control to any of them and this particular one has it. Of course, you can't add it if the soft tail already has it, like the Sport Glide and the Heritage. But uh, if it doesn't have it, you can add it. Um, so as I was saying, it's a blank canvas. In Southern California, that means as uh, you know, what we see most commonly is going to be something like what you're seeing on screen right now, which would be a uh, sort of a club style bike. Typical of that would be T-bars, some sort of quarter fairing or uh, something like this Memphis Shades uh, fairing on there, a uh, <clears throat> black aesthetic, uh, at least all of the engine finishes should be black, or I mean something sometimes the, the low riders we see chromed out. Uh, usually performance focused, so upgraded suspension, more powerful engines. Uh, T-bars, like I mentioned, that's going to help with splitting lanes here on the West Coast. And then a two-into-one exhaust is going to be the most common exhaust choice. And if you're trying to get an idea of how tall you need to be to, to ride one of these, I'm not a tall guy. I'm about 5'8", uh, maybe 5'9", on a good day. And uh, I'm more than able to flat foot these in uh, the Harley boots that I'm wearing right there. And uh, it's, uh, I think, uh, a good size for me overall. Andrew and I just took out the street bobs and so I wanted to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about you know, what I found and I've ridden the street bob many times before but maybe just kind of touch on a few things. It's always nice to take the bike out again just to kind of reiterate some things that I've, I've felt in the past and the street bob, I've said this before, is a really good value in my opinion. It's the, the lowest, the least expensive bike that has the big twin, the Milwaukee 8. Um, you can get into the bike for between fourteen, five, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. And you know, for that for that money, the value is really, really good. That, and I feel like the styling is very on point as well with the street bob. You've got the the blacked out bobber look, which I feel like is still really popular. Uh, it's kind of been around; it's been trending. That style's been trending for a while now, but I feel like a lot of people really like that style. And you know, it's it's a step up uh, in, in a big way from the Sportster family. Like I said, you've got the big the big twin engine, the Milwaukee Eight, the 107 cubic inch. You've also got a six-speed transmission. I feel like that's a big factor that sometimes people overlook is being out on the highway, you know, 65 miles an hour or faster with the six-speed transmission that it really, to bring down the RPM when you're doing that kind of speed by clicking it in the sixth gear, that makes it a big difference in just kind of the calmness of the ride and everything. The new chassis that came out in 2018, I'll just kind of reiterate things I've said in the past, that new chassis is just light years better than the Dyna chassis. Everything from the handling. The more I ride the street bob, the more I ride the soft tails and kind of compare them to the old soft tail and Dyna frame, 
the, the, the weight is definitely there or the lack thereof, I should say. So you feel the, the reduced weight and just the stiffness of that frame, just throwing that thing around. Sometimes uh, I forget that I'm on a Harley when I'm on that soft tail frame, especially on bikes like the Street Bob that have a little bit better leaning with the peg as, as opposed to like the floorboard. Just a bike that's really fun to put through the paces, put them into turns. Just the power to weight ratio is really good. It's just a fun bike to throw around. And for a cruiser, you know, it just handles really well. It takes off off the line really well. The Street Bob is very much just like your raw, minimalist, uh, big twin, soft tail bike. So a really, just a really solid mid-range cruiser. Now when you compare that to like the Fat Bob or uh, like the, the Lowrider S that Nick is comparing the bike to in this video, yeah, there's some more performance-based uh, characteristics, characteristics and parts on the Lowrider S that you're not getting in the Street Bob. But if you're someone that you know, maybe doesn't see benefit there or maybe they're not gonna be riding it as hard uh, as maybe someone would that is gonna take advantage of those parts, to save the money and get the Street Bob, that, that may be a good avenue for you to take. Also, if you're looking for that as a particular style, you know, the chopped fenders, uh, that smaller tank, you can see more of the Milwaukee 8, more of the head and everything. So aesthetically, it definitely has a different aesthetic. So if you're building a bike that is more in the direction of a bobber, the Street Bob is also a really good choice. You know, let's talk a little bit more about the Milwaukee 8. The, the weight, the weight reduction is one thing with the frame, uh, but also just the reduction in the heat is really nice as well. That's another factor that I think a lot of people don't take into consideration, especially when you compare it to the 110. Uh, twin cam, 110 cubic inch twin cam that came on like the Lowrider S of the previous generation Dyna frame. The heat that radiates up off that engine is a lot less. Those Lowriders with the 110, they got really hot, especially when, you know, in high 90s uh, degree temperature sitting at a stoplight, they got really hot. But this, the Street Bob, the lace wheels are cool, it definitely goes along with the style. I'm, if I were to choose and have to go one way, I, I prefer the mag wheels, but the lace wheels are definitely appropriate for the style, the barber style that the Street Bob is going for. But the stage three was fun. The stage three, that bike, the bike moves. Uh, I, I still am, am never, I never, it never ceases to amaze me, you know, how fast these, these Harley Davidsons can get to. You know, I've ridden, ridden bikes for a long time now, and when you compare you know, the twin cam, the older generation Harleys to these newer generation, new soft tails, the Milwaukee 8 with, you know, these, these higher performing, you know, pistons heads and, and cams in there. They're a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Now, is it for everybody? No, but you know, you are after all buying a cruiser and not everybody really feels the need to go real fast on cruisers. But if you're a guy that wants to have the cruiser uh, aspect, the, the cruiser experience, the ergonomics, the look, the feel, and the style of a Harley Davidson and take it to the next level performance wise, the stage three and stage four kits are a lot of fun and they'll definitely give you that, that extra power that you're looking for at no risk as well. You know, if you use the Screaming Eagle stuff, have it installed the first 60 days or get the Screaming Eagle warranty, you're risk free and doing performance work risk free is something actually relatively new to the Harley world. I feel like sometimes people think that it's just with the single disc brake on like the, the low rider standard, not the low rider S, but the standard low rider and the street bob, a lot of times isn't adequate. If they are adequate, you know, you got the four piston caliper up front and the, the, the brakes work really well. Now the dual disc brake, again, it's gonna, it's gonna help uh, alleviate brake fade if you're really going through the canyons hard and using the brakes a ton, you know, really accelerating in and out and braking in and out of every single turn. Of course, that's not how most people ride, especially on a day-to-day -day basis. Most people aren't gonna ride like that, so most people aren't gonna really ever see the full benefit of the dual disc brake. Um, you do have a little bit more ease uh, of braking, you know, more of a, like a one-finger operation with the dual disc brake, but the single disc brakes for 99% of the application out there is gonna be really good. The, the, if I can say a couple negatives about the Street Bob that I, that I personally couldn't live with, the seat, it looks cool. It has that real minimalist bobber styling with the ribbed look on it, but the seat, the seat is just is not very comfortable. It doesn't really have that contour to kind of lock you into the riding position. That's one thing that I would have to pretty much change out immediately. Uh, the headlamp, the headlamp's okay. It's, it's the five and three quarters headlamp, which 
gets the job done, but not the best lighting in the world. You know, if you get a, a bike like a Deluxe or a Heritage with those spot lamps, it's going to be significantly at least 50% better than just that, that little small um, five, five and three quarters headlight up, headlight up front. It is nice that it's LED that helps out a lot when you compare it to the Dyna Street Bob. Dyna Street Bob with just that halogen light, light was, was never as good. But I, I still do feel like the Street Bob has a solid place in the Harley Davidson lineup for the reasons that I mentioned. You know, the style is very unique, especially when you compare it to the Lowrider and the Lowrider S. It, it has that, that bobber you know, style that a lot of guys are, are going to go for, and a lot of guys prefer that as opposed to kind of more of that, that full fender look with the bigger fuel tank. Um, and you know, you've also got a price point that is. Uh, differentiated enough to make it worth going down a notch and, and saving the money for maybe equipment that you might not need like the inverted front end the dual disc brakes the 114 motor you may not need that the 107 is still more than adequate power uh, as I rode the 107 I could throw that thing around you know accelerating on the freeway no problem the bikes power to weight ratio is still very very strong the 114 is for that guy that just really wants to, you know, haul ass around and just wants to take their performance uh, on, on, on their cruiser to the next level. So, as many of you know, if, if you're first uh, time watching our videos, I own a Dyna 2017 Lowrider S. Um, in comparison from that to this bike, um, this this street bob this new frame is just overall a lot lighter stock to stock the giddy up on the stock bike uh, on the street bob has a little bit more pep to it i feel in the, in the top end um, but for me i like the dyna a little bit more uh, as far as i don't know that just the raw appeal that i like i like the twin cam i like the sound the feel the raspiness to the Dyna and the twin cam um, but the new frame the soft toe frame is better in every way as far as performance acceleration braking light the, the weight of the bike and how light it is and, and easy to maneuver um, stock for stock I don't like the ergonomics of the Street Bob. I, I can't stand the stock seat. For me, it's just, it's not a comfortable seat. It doesn't hold me in. I am a bigger guy, um, but if I were to get something like this, I'd change a seat out first thing. I just feel scrunched up. The rider triangle, so to speak, is not ideal for me. Um, and I feel like the, the baby apes on these are just a little bit too wide. Um, riding the Stage 3 bike, is just absolutely insane it is nuts i haven't ridden a stage three milwaukee eight in a soft tail and that thing absolutely boogies uh i got on it on second gear mid to second uh mid to high second gear and i just cracked it open that thing just pulled man it was just a hell of a ride um with that being said it had the stock seating position so when i cranked open the throttle it just slid me off and it was just it was uncomfortable to ride i didn't really like that but um it, it's minor things it's it's changing the seat out it's putting uh different bars that i like and a fairing and kind of making it a t-sport type bike um but yeah absolutely just nuts that 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 stage three is is awesome um i would recommend the street bob for the type of rider that is coming from the dirt scene or is looking at dinas or is you know who currently has a, a sportster or is looking at a sportster and depending on rider experience i'd lean them towards a street bob because i have had a lot of people that i come in contact with that are a lot of people a lot of their buddies or or forums or places on the internet tell them eh, you're a first time rider you get an iron 83 well a lot of that may be true but not everyone's the same and have has the same riding experience and the same structure build and all that so you got to take that in consideration as far as what kind of experience you have if you have a lot of dirt you know and and you know a lot of dirt riding experience 
generally they outgrow a sports through within six months and I, I tend to talk them out of it and they're just happier their dollar goes goes further on a soft tail frame because you don't outgrow it as quick and generally the people that buy soft tails usually keep them for about five to six years and they then they want something another soft tail or a road king something on the touring platform um, and yeah it, it just all depends on, on riding experience all right so um, I didn't get a chance to take out the street bob, but I have ridden it plenty of times. And as Andrew mentioned, uh, and I'm sure that Matt has mentioned as well, um, it hasn't really changed since 2018. There's just new color options. Um, so the reason we're doing this video though is I feel like the the bikes around the lowrider, not the lowrider, but the street bob, have changed. And um, the main way that it's changed within the soft tail market is going to be the introduction of the lowrider S. Um, and so. It's something that I've noticed, obviously, there's been pent up demand for the Lowrider S, and so we've sold a whole bunch of them uh, in the last two months since their launch. Um, and we haven't sold nearly as many Street Bobs. And so I was just wondering myself, is there still a place in the market for the Street Bob? You know, who would choose the Street Bob over the Lowrider S? Who is this bike for now that that bike exists? And I still think it has a pretty compelling place in the market, um, but I think that its role has changed a little bit. Uh, and so that's why I wanted to shoot a review on a bike that really hadn't substantially changed because the market around it had changed. Um, so who I think this bike is for at this point is uh, a couple of different groups. There's gonna be the sort of budget conscious person. I think the, maybe the person that was considering an Iron 1200 um, or maybe one of the other 1200 uh, Sportsters that might be willing to stretch another 70 to 100 bucks into their monthly payment in order to get a bike that has a six-speed transmission, a bigger fuel tank, uh, much more suspension travel, basically a much more highway-capable bike. Because there's a lot of guys that they want to commute on on a, on a motorcycle, uh, especially in Southern California, uh, because it's going to save them time and it's going to get them better fuel economy. But their commute involves maybe 20 miles of highway. And for those guys, I, I think it makes a really big difference in the quality of life if they step up to a soft tail for all the reasons I just stated. Suspension travel, six-speed transmission, more power, uh, better fairing options, um, bigger gas tank. Uh, those things make a huge quality of life difference that I think warrant the 70 to 100 bucks a month that this is gonna demand over one of those 1200 Sportsters. You got it, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> So, as I was saying, I think that this uh, really can justify itself for the right use case over something like one of the Sportsters. Um, but if you then factor in another additional three grand on top of the price of one of these to get a lowrider S, suddenly we're not talking about 70 to 100 bucks, we're talking about over $150 more than a Sportster, which I think for that budget-focused guy, trying to swing someone on an additional $150 on their monthly payment, that's a bigger ask and suddenly, um, the marginal benefits of the inverted front end, the dual disc brakes, um, they start to mean a little bit less. They don't start to, you know, it's harder to justify the $150 increase. So I think for that budget focus guy, it's a big deal. And uh, the second category of guys, I think are the guys that this styling resonates more for. You know, here in Southern California, we get wrapped around the, the low rider scene, uh, that, you know, long fender with the five gallon tank, with the uh, dual gauge setup. Um, with the mag wheels. That's something that's extremely popular in Southern California, um, but the bobber look is, is really, really powerful in other parts of the country. You know, we see bikes that get traded in that have uh, ape hangers on them, which is something you wouldn't really do on uh, like a, uh, a club style bike here in, in the West Coast. Um, you know, white walls, uh, chopped fenders, all that kind of stuff. It's still popular in lots of parts of the country. Um, and even within SoCal, within certain, you know, riding communities, it's just not what we see the majority of. Um, so I still think there's a place for that guy that doesn't want the club style bike. He wants the bobber look. Well, the street bob's going to do a much better job of achieving that than the lowrider S because you don't want the mag wheels. You don't want the inverted front end. You don't want the dual disc brakes. You want that really classic aesthetic that the street bob offers. So, uh, there's definitely still a place for it in the market, but I think that a lot of the guys that were building these and dumping, you know, three or four grand into them to customize them exactly how they wanted with bars, bigger motor, with upgraded suspension, with fairings, all that kind of stuff. Um, those guys are going to be better served going with a Lowrider S and just sticking a fairing on it uh, because 
you're going to spend roughly the same amount of money, but it's going to be a mostly stock bike. Uh, which I think is, uh, you know, always preferred rather than having to spend much more money on modifications. I mean, there's fun aspects of personalizing things, but obviously the more you modify a bike, uh, the more that you've changed it from stock, you don't usually add value, but that lowrider S is gonna retain that value based upon that higher MSRP and based upon it being a lowrider S. So starting at that point, I think is better because you're gonna retain uh, more of that value, whereas modifications don't always retain their value. Um, but other than that, I think the guys did a much better job talking about it considering the bike was fresher in their mind. Um, I really like the point that Andrew was making about uh, comparing the character of uh, a stock bike versus the character of a modified bike. You know, we all have this perception of the Dyna having a lot more character than the new Softail because of the twin cam. And while that's to a degree true because it's rubber mounted and the, the bike you know vibrates more, uh, these bikes still vibrate uh, quite a bit even though the primary forces are you know canceled out, the secondary forces aren't. Um, uh, and once you add a set of pipes to them and you've got that noise and that, uh, you know, that sound, that classic Harley sound, you know, the bikes still have tons and tons of character. And, you know, Andrew talked about that with the stage three, how, you know, it was just, uh, it was really awesome how, you know, quick that bike was. And, you know, that bike's got, it, you know, obviously very loud exhaust. It's got that traditional Harley sound, as I'm sure you heard in the, in the clips. Um, it's just going to be on a, on a better platform. So. Uh, I'm pretty biased uh, towards the new soft tail chassis myself, considering that I uh, have put over uh, at this point probably eight to ten thousand miles on them. Uh, they're great bikes; I love them very much. But uh, the street bob was just something that I was curious as to how it was going to fit into the the new market with the low rider S, and I think that it's no longer going to be the go to for the guy who wants a blacked out soft tail, um, at least in Southern California. But for the guy who wants that classic bobber aesthetic, that really minimalist design, I think this bike's still gonna really resonate with him. And the guy that is after the practicality and, and really getting the most bang for his buck and getting that soft tail bike to commute on, um, that big step up from where the Sportsters are, uh, is still gonna really enjoy this package overall. So uh, thanks for tuning in. And uh, we, as always, appreciate your viewership. Do remember to subscribe and uh, like the video. Uh, it really does help us out. Um, I do believe we're still selling some Coast Glide uh, memorabilia online. So uh, if you want some of that Global Champ uh, gear, uh, I think we're selling hats and shirts. Um, if we're not on there, hopefully we'll be restocking soon. Um, get that while you can, because as you know, the Coast Glide was a uh, crowned world champ. So those are some pretty cool hats to have. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Mike, check. One, two. Mike, check. There's vomit on his sweater already. Mom's spaghetti. Ready?